first crush in high school? <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Ooh, um, my first crush is probably Lance O'Pry. Duncan Huey. Chris Mitchell, which I hope never watches <laughs> this. Brian Peterson. Matt Kuda. C.H. Herman, he was tall, dark, and handsome. You know, the big stud on campus. He was a couple years older. The guy who got the, the leads in all the plays. Was very handsome, big man on campus. Oh yeah. He was just kind of that hot, buff guy. He was punk. He had like that little mustache that he was trying to grow in and my mom was freaked out because he had facial hair and he was 14. But was a hoe. Just funny, really funny guy. My parents were very brilliant because they hired him as my yard boy. But that didn't quite work out. <laughs> I had a raging crush on him for three years. Never said a word to him. Never. And he told me I was the smartest girl he ever knew, so he could never date me. I ended up dating him for three years, and we're best friends now. I ended up dating him a little while my sophomore year, so dreams do come true. That would have ruined it. Ab absolutely ruined it if I'd actually had to talk to him, because then I would have found out that he was a jock with too much money and probably would have uh, hated me. <laughs> my first kiss. <laughs> I don't remember my first kiss. My first kiss. Mm, so lovely and wonderful and magical. Daniel? Oh my gosh! I think it was his best friend, actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was my crush's best friend who I dated first. <laughs> That's so bad. I had to get closer to the crush, you know? No. Uh, <laughs> a kid who lived down the street rode over to my house on his skateboard, ran over my foot. I was crying, and so he kissed me. <laughs> in the eighth grade. This is actually very funny because I don't like this kid at all. I don't remember where it was. We had a lot of gum and it just kind of happened just randomly. We had a ketchup bottle and we spun it and it hit him and all I remember is winter fresh everywhere. It was just a <gasps> and I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, I remember it was by his car outside my parents house, you know, like walk him to his car. Okay, I'll see you later. That was awkward. You know, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we did that. It was very weird. It was very weird. I mean, you know, before it was all my, my teddy bears and stuff, you know, and it's not the same thing. <laughs> so embarrassing to think about. I'm like sweating. <laughs> you know, this is my first kiss. Look, I'm just really desperate. I just want to have my first kiss and I'm sorry that you're dating him, but I don't like him at all. This is like a long, long time ago. So I didn't even like him. And now he still thinks that I like him and he'll still be like, hey, yeah, I was your first kiss. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I never liked you. You were a pity person, okay? But, yeah, it was pretty awkward. <laughs> okay, anyways, next question. Do you really want me to say this? Oh, God. Okay. My most embarrassing moment was at a pep rally. I was in choir, and we were doing a Messiah performance. I gained a little bit of weight in ninth grade. I was wearing this red dress and these pantyhose. And I used to be very, very prissy, and I wore dresses every day. I fell off the bleachers. Oh my gosh. I fell off the stage. I sat down at lunch. Somebody picked me up. And my pants split open. Blue! And they log rolled me down the entire stand. In front of everybody. By the time I got to the floor of the gymnasium. My legs went blue. It happens in front of the entire school, my skirt was around my waist. I didn't have a jacket to cover anything up, so I had to run to the bathroom with my hands on my butt. To me, that was the most embarrassing moment. That almost brings me to tears, it's so embarrassing. Freshman year, I had on a tank top. My first time wearing a thong. And I had on a strapless bra. And I came from a little private school, a little good girl. <laughs> <clears throat> my mom picked me up after school. We all come out for exams, and then this, we're in this skirt. I thought I looked really good that day. And these are my friends, okay? Yeah, friends. And I came walking out. One of the guys was like, oh, let's go pull down the skirt down. And I'm like, in the middle of the hall, and he goes, Bloo! pulls it down. <gasps> when you have shock, you don't move. I had shock. My life is over. I stood there, okay, like a deer. Maggie, what is going on? I was like, totally like, Oh my god. I looked down, my strapless bra, which had a little padding, because I'm not very big, had moved down. Bent over, pulled the bottom of my skirt up, realized, oh my gosh, I'm pulling the bottom up, rolled it back down, then rolled the top of it up. And I'm like, oh! So I had four titties. Then it happened again! Breasts. And all my friends just like, oh, 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 oh. Whatever I can say on camera. <laughs> I'm so mad at them for that and it was very crucial and, and, and heartbreaking and that was embarrassing.
I just felt like a bigger nerd. Very embarrassing. But that's okay because I got a little junk in the trunk now, so put on my pants anytime. I don't really have the most embarrassing moment. I guess I skipped out on that. It's good. I played Becky, and she is the, I think, 11-year-old, 10-year-old MIT grad who's very brilliant, of course, but she's not quite um, developed mentally to handle the, the antics that are going on in a high school setting. So she's very sensitive and kind of goes through a emotional roller coasters where one minute she's very aggressive and she's in charge, she's in control, and the next minute she's breaking down, hiding behind a curtain, crying. It's a lot of fun. Raise a bitch. Um, and it's not really me. That's the funny part because I think I'm a pretty nice person and it's just really fun to go out of character like that. I play Himeko Katagiri. And she says Maho all the time. She's a spaz, badly in need of Paxil. Um, she goes like 100 miles per hour. She likes to tell Becky how totally omega gorgeous she is all the time. And, and she's just, uh, she's a hoot, definitely. I play Karumi. And she is, unfortunately, the boring girl. And um, when she, when everyone tells her that she's boring, she gets very upset and runs into the rabbit cages and cries. I play Masosa. The sad, 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 desperately sad bunny who has no thumbs and can't pick up anything. I play Miyako, the little angry nerd with the cool glasses, and I do wear red glasses sometimes. So I, I feel I kind of, you know, look like her sometimes. Okay, so my character is Ichijo, and she's a little bipolar, I guess you could say. She tries, she has this meek and quiet side to her, but then all of a sudden she'll just snap and lose it, and she actually ends up killing the bunny rabbit. And yeah, she tries to fit in, but the other girls just don't accept her, and she struggles with that a lot. Sure, I break down all the time and hide behind curtains. Um, no, I can't say I went to MIT. Um, when I was 10, I was probably playing with mud pies and dolls. I don't know. But um, uh, the, the manic part of it sometimes, yeah. On the inside. <laughs> I'm kind of, well, I don't really speak my mind like she does. I do under my breath, though, when nobody's watching. I would definitely say that I'm, I'm, a, I'm partially like my character. I'm bubbly and easygoing, and I'm definitely talkative. I can definitely talk your ear off and, you know, either like me or hate me type of thing. So, yeah, I am. She is cool. I really like being mean. Yeah, I like being mean. It's, it's nice. And uh, she's all bitchy and nerdy and crazy. And I'm not so much nerdy because, uh, like, I'm not a big, you know, into school person, but I am mean at times. If you get on my nerves, I'm like, oh, my God, can you just, like, chill out and stop and get on my face? Yeah, I'm like that a lot. So I, I could, you know, I really, I feel with her. I'm not boring at all, um, but I guess in a way I'm very sensitive to what other people say, and so, you know, I can relate a little bit, but I'm not boring at all. I would say I'm a little bit fiery. I'm an Aries, so I obviously have the fiery blood in me, but no, I've never killed anybody. I've never killed a bunny rabbit. Maybe my fish, because I wasn't very good with goldfish, but never a bunny rabbit. All I know is that I have no thumbs. And then I'm very sad. <laughs> no <laughs> thumbs. <laughs> hmm, that's a good question. I think that I got the part because I can talk really fast and loud, and my voice has that annoying pitch to where I or I can make it annoying to where it's it's perfect for the character because she's just annoying and fast and bubbly and blah, and that's how I talk. <laughs> but when I heard the voice of Becky in Japanese, I was like, oh my God, she sounds like me. Because she had a little like raspiness to her voice in the Japanese. I was like, ooh, I could do that, I could do that. And it just looked like such a cute show that I think I went psycho on Steven and even called him like, you have to give me that part, please give me that part. I want that part so badly, oh my God, oh my God. Because I just thought it was so cute. And I love to play those manic characters that, you know, turn on a dime. It's just a lot of fun to do. I think I got the part because I went to the director, Stephen Foster, and said, I really want this part. <laughs> I think that's why I got it. I was scared at first because, you know, I don't, you don't really, this doesn't come around every day. But since me and, you know, Stephen's relationship is like this, we, <laughs> like, I really, I have fun 
I think because I'm doing it with him and I have I have fun with um, with the whole process and everything. It's just cool to be somebody else and like see the cartoon like back at you after you've you know watching it. It's just kind of like oh that was me okay. Oh, there I am again. Well, I got the part um, a friend of mine had told me about ABV Films, and I came in and I auditioned for Steven, and then he just called me in and I auditioned, and I did my voice along with the animation and saw if it matched up well and did different kinds of voices, and I guess I was just a good fit for the character. When I first got in the booth, I was really confused on what to do. Steven had to walk me through it, but I got, I got the hang of it pretty quick, and it's a lot of fun. It's really neat. I wish everybody could do it, but they can't because only the talented people can. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like such a fatty in this bed. Please don't put that on there. My favorite subject was English. Um, any of the liberal arts, so English, humanities, French, those are probably my three top favorites. My favorite subject of course was theater and I liked the film club and other than that I guess English. I guess English was my favorite. I didn't like math so much. My favorite class probably is calculus. I'm really good at math and also dance which I'm in two dance classes just because I've been doing that since I was three. Oh, I loved English. Um, I had this amazing English teacher my senior year of high school, and we used to watch movies. We'd have a tea day on Wednesdays and watch movies and analyze them. And I also loved history and French. I liked actually pretty much everything. Terrible at math and science, though. I guess sometimes English. And the, in, like, in the first years of high school, I took a lot of theater classes, which I, I liked those. Just kind of took them for basic stuff. But lunch, that was the main one. <laughs> My favorite teacher in high school? Well, I guess that would have to be my theater teacher. I would have to say my favorite teacher ever was Mrs. Everson. Um, Miss Davis. We called her Dis Mavis. She was really cool. I don't really think I had one, but uh, I kind of enjoyed the PE teacher because of the funny way that he liked to sit. I liked my uh, senior high school uh, uh, English class. Short shorts, if you know what I mean. <laughs> with our uh, cool teacher with the long blonde hair. He was cool. Probably. Miss Feinstein, she was the French teacher. Um, Mr. Dipple, my calculus teacher. She was just really cool. You know, she always wore these cool little glasses and had spiky hair and dressed really cute, but pretty much like all the kids. I used to not like him very much, but now I do because I learned how to suck up and he likes me. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite teacher was Mr. Beale. Yes, he was awesome. She really believed in me and gave me um, a lot of confidence as a young woman. He had a really good way of teaching he would take answers if they were funny, even if they weren't the right answers, because it was funny and it made him laugh. And uh, if you were ever sleeping, he'd slap you in the head with a huge, like, four-foot-long ruler. So he, he was hilarious. Ooh. Teacher that I hated the most, Miss Penlin. Mr. Dipple can just kiss my butt. <laughs> what teacher did I hate? I'm not going to say that. She was a mean, mean mother. She wasn't really my teacher, but she was our cheerleading sponsor. Oh, she was evil. I did not like her. She was almost sexist. She's a woman, but she'd like always let the boys go to the bathroom and never let the girls, and always let the boys answer, never let the girls answer. And she's old, and she had squinty eyes and glasses, and she had a high-pitched voice. She'd always, you know, be like, oh, your shorts, too, your shirt's too short, or raise your arms, I can see your belly button. She didn't really care about us. She just said, you know, girls, I just, I just didn't like her at all. She had this complex, and she didn't like girls, and she did not like me, so I really did not like her. Oh, any girls I hated? Well... <laughs> oh yeah, I had my enemies. Oh yeah, definitely. Not really. I'm sure that there were plenty of people who hated me though. Because when you're quiet and you're shy, a lot of people think you're stuck up. No, but my best friend turned into my enemy. Oh, she's stuck up. Her name was Crystal. She was uppity. <laughs> and she got the same prom dress as one of the other, my other best friend, and there was this big fight and everything. It was, it was bad. She did it on purpose though, so we hated her for it. No, I don't have any enemies. Um, I have a lot of guy friends, and I also have a lot of girlfriends. There's actually a few girls that I hated in high school, sadly. However, whenever I first meet girls, they seem to instantly hate me for some reason. But then once they get to know me, they like me. But I don't have any enemies. 
there was a girl, Lindsay, that I really, really, really hated. Um, we were friends at first, and and she tried to get together with Duncan, which was my boyfriend at the time, and it was a big, dramatic thing, and then she keyed my car, so I keyed her car, and then I slashed her tires, and then she slashed my tires, and yeah, so we hated each other most definitely. <laughs> These mean girls that were friends with my ex-boyfriend, they had all, a lot of them had dated him, so after I started dating him, we're not the same type of people. They're like all grungy looking girls. I didn't like them. And after they were like, like, oh, you like her? They were totally mad at him, and this is this went on for like a long time. Called me names in high school, rude to me, just would see me at a party, like would chase me my friend out. And I mean, I know I may look like a tough girl, but I run. I mean, I run. <laughs> Get in my car, like that's my biggest weapon, my car, because I will run you over with my car, but I won't use these things, you know. Yeah, I'm not very intimidating. But there was always this group of girls that were just awful to people, and I had been with them ever since I was three years old. They lived in the same neighborhood, and one girl in particular, her name's Lauren West, I hope you're not watching, or maybe you are, and she was just awful, just, you know, she thought she was beautiful, she had horse teeth, she was just mean to people, and she followed me. I thought when I went to college I'd get rid of her. No, she ended up living in the same dorm as me. Yeah, and we had the same class together, and she told everyone we knew each other, and I just can't stand her to this day. I can't stand her, and I keep track of what she's doing and how miserable her life has been. It sounds really mean, but she's an awful person. I went to Lamar Consolidated High School outside of Houston. Um, I was telling somebody the other day, if you've seen the movie Election, her on crack would probably be me because I had to be involved in everything. So if I wasn't in the club and like president of the club, then I wasn't happy. So if there was a contest of anything, I wanted to be in the contest and hopefully win it, but it didn't always happen that way. I went to high school at Clear Creek High School in League City, Texas, and I was a metalhead, Queen's Rack. <laughs> Iron Maiden. So, yeah, I hung out uh, at the back of the school. Um, but I was very smart. And mostly I was just doing people's homework. <laughs> I'm not smart anymore. It wore off. I go to Humble High School. I'm class president, and I'm captain on the drill team. I'm in FFA, where I raise animals, like my steer named Brutus. And I've also raised about four or five lambs, and I've had rabbits forever. And also, I'm in National Honor Society and Student Council. I went to Kempner High School. And that's in Sugarland, Texas, off of Voss and Highway 6. I was a country girl, uh, mostly. I rode horses and barrel raced in the rodeo, and I was in FFA, and, and then I did theater besides that, musical theater and stuff like that, and that's how I ended up getting into this in the first place. I went to Clear Lake High School in Clear Lake. I was the hyper one with the big poofy hair. Um, we didn't have flat irons when I was like younger, so uh, just kind of froed it out sometimes. <laughs> and um, just, I, I really just, I just, I found the friends that were not involved in anything and we just kind of did our own thing. A lot of laughter, a lot of peeing in our pants from laughter. And I was just, I was kind of just the kid that, I didn't get good grades. I always went to class. I was like, oh my gosh, y'all are skipping. And you know, oh my gosh, y'all smoke cigarettes. But then I changed a little bit, <laughs> got a little corrupted. And, <laughs> but high school was a, a cool experience. And I was just one of those, one of those weird kids. I went to high school, Smoky Hill High School in Aurora, Colorado, a very suburban public high school. I was a good mix, I guess you could say. I was one of the popular kids. I hung out with the popular kids and I dated, you know, the football players and homecoming princess type. And then I was also very smart. I was in IB, it was called International Baccalaureate, so it was advanced classes. And then I was in drama club, so I was a wide array and I had a lot of different kinds of friends which people either liked or they didn't, but I like to be diverse. I went to high school on the north side of Houston and Westfield High School. I was a cheerleader, I was president of my thespian club, but I don't know if I was necessarily in the popular group. I kind of, I don't know, maybe I was too boring. <laughs> I think high school is always a great place to set any sort of, you know, sitcom or comedy like this because 
we all have had the experience or we're all going to have the experience. And you know, the stereotypes just hold true. I'm sorry, I don't care where you go to school, you know, they're the popular ones, the geeky ones, the athletic ones, the ones who don't know what the heck's going on. Because high school's funny and high school's awkward and it's the years you'll never forget. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> it's just funny. It's funny in real life. I'm in high school right now, and it's just funny. It's the time where you got hormones, and so everyone's experiencing themselves for the first time, and feet are growing faster than anything else, and limbs are going, and everyone's clumsy, and... Because everything that sucks is in high school. <laughs> everyone's just discovering who they are, and uh, there's there's... Lots of social drama that can happen. Everybody knows the drama, and there's also, in Pony Pony Dash, there's also all the different personality types, like the bully and the spaz and the um, super inventive one that sneaks and spies on everyone, and there's the bookworm, and so, and everybody can laugh at that because everyone's been there and known those people in high school. You got all different types of people. We, funky things happen. That. I mean, I would n that would never happen now, happened in my high school. Or you can laugh at them now, but back then it was like the end of your life, which is pretty funny. High school is a great place to set a comedy just because everyone can relate to it. Um, you know, you have your stereotypical characters and your cliques that everyone knows about, and, you know, everything is so, so important in high school and so serious. And, you know, we can all make fun of ourselves. I think it's fun.